We know that we can multiply polynomials by using the distributive property. We want to multiply 3x times 2x squared plus 5. To do this, we simply use the distributive property and multiply both terms in the parentheses by the 3x. When we do that, we end up with the result 6x to the third plus 15x. But what if we want to go backward? What if we start with 6x to the third plus 15x and we want our answer to be 3x times 2x squared plus 5. Going backward is a process known as factoring. There are many techniques that we can use to factor polynomials. In this lesson, we're going to use the method known as the greatest common factor. Here's how it works. We begin with the result 6x to the third plus 15x. We want to factor this to get 3x times 2x squared plus 5, as we began with at the start of this example. We begin by looking at both terms, and we look at the numbers specifically. We have a 6 and a 15. We want the largest number that divides both 6 and 15 evenly. That number is 3. So we divide both terms by 3, and we see what we have as a result. 6x to the third divided by 3 is 2x to the third, and 15x divided by 3 is simply 5x. Now we re-examine the numbers, 2 and 5. Is there any number larger than 1 that divides both 2 and 5 evenly? The answer is no. Now we turn our sights on the variables. We have x to the third in the first term, and a single x in the second term. We take out the amount that has the lowest exponent. x to the first is the smallest amount of x's in either of the terms, and so what we will do is factor out an x. We divide both terms by x, and we have the result 2x squared plus 5. We re-examine the terms to see if there are any other factors that we can factor and divide out. There are not. We now take the outside value, 3x, and the inside value, 2x squared plus 5, and we rewrite them, 3x times 2x squared plus 5. This is the factored form of the polynomial, and this is how we factor polynomials using greatest common factor. Let's take a look at a few examples. In exercise 2, we want to factor the polynomial 8x to the third plus 4x to the fourth. We begin by copying the problem down, and then we look at the numbers. What is the largest number that goes into both 8 and 4 evenly? The answer is 4. We divide both numbers by 4, 8x to the third divided by 4 is 2x to the third, and 4x divided by 4 is simply 1x to the fourth. Often folks will ask if they have to write the 1 in front of the x to the fourth, and I recommend doing it for now and removing it at the end of the problem. Now we turn our sights on the variables. We have x to the third in the first term, and x to the fourth in the second term. The smallest exponent on our x's is x to the third. All of the terms have at least three x's. So we factor out x to the third, and then we do our division. 2x to the third divided by x to the third is simply 2. 1x to the fourth divided by x to the third is simply 1x. I re-examine both terms to see if there's anything else to factor out. There's nothing in common, and so I take the outside result, 4x to the third, and I write that first, and then I take the rest of the result, the 2 plus 1x, and I write that in the parentheses. Notice in my result, I simply wrote 2 plus x. It's not necessary to write 1x. It's certainly appropriate to simply say 2 plus x. In exercise 3, we want to factor 2y squared minus 4y. This exercise is for you to try. Please pause the video here and factor this polynomial. We begin by copying the problem down and then looking at both of the terms. We first look at the numbers to see if there are any numbers in common or what the largest number is that divides both. We have a 2 and a 4. The largest number that divides 2 and 4 evenly is simply the number 2. So we write that out front and then we divide both terms by 2. 2y squared divided by 2 is simply 1y squared. 4y divided by 2 is simply minus 2y. I check the numbers 1 and 2 
and see that there is no number larger than one that divides both. I now set my sights on the variables. I notice that both terms have y's. The first term has y to the second power. The second term has a y to the first power. The smallest value is y to the first, and so I simply factor out a y, and then I divide both terms. y to the second divided by y is simply y, and minus 2y divided by y is simply minus 2. There are no further amounts to factor out, and so I write my polynomial in factored form, with the 2y on the outside of the parentheses and the y minus 2 on the inside. We can expand this process to trinomials, polynomials that have three terms, and the process is identical. We begin by copying the problem 40x to the third plus 5x squared plus 10x. We now look at all three numbers, and we're looking for the largest number that evenly divides 40, 5, and 10. The largest possible number is 5, because that's the smallest number, and it turns out that 5 does divide all of these. So I'll factor out a 5, and then divide each term by 5. I re-examine the numbers just to make sure I didn't miss anything, and I have 8, 1, and 2. The largest number that divides all three is 1, so there are no further numbers to factor out. So now I set my sights on the variables. I have x to the third in the first term, x to the second in the second term, and x in the third term. All of the terms have x's, so I can factor some x's out. What is the smallest exponent on the x's? x to the first. All terms have at least one x, so I can factor out the single x and then divide each term by x. Once again, I re-examine my terms to see if there's anything else in common. No numbers divide 8, 1, and 2, and there are no variables in common because only the first two terms have x's. The third one does not. I can now write my polynomial in factored form. The 5x from the outside goes outside the parentheses, and the 8x squared plus x plus 2 on the inside. Here's an exercise for you to try. Can you factor 16x to the fifth plus 8x to the fourth plus 2x to the third? Pause the video here and give this problem a try. Let's see how you did. We began by copying the problem down and we looked at the numbers 16, 8, and 2. The smallest number here is 2, so we don't have very many choices to see what would divide all of them. The largest number that divides all three of them is actually the number 2. We write that out front and divide each of the three terms by 2. We double check our numbers 8, 4, and 1 and see that no number goes into all three of those other than 1. We now set our sights on the variables. We have x to the fifth, x to the fourth, and x to the third. The smallest exponent is x to the third and because all terms have x's, we can factor out that x to the third. We then divide all three terms by x to the third, giving us 8x squared plus 4x plus 1. We re-examine the terms to make sure we didn't miss anything. Are there any numbers to factor out? Are there any variables in common to all three terms? There are not. We now write our polynomial in factored form. 2x to the third on the outside, and 8x squared plus 4x plus 1 on the inside. The next two examples have a couple of interesting cases that we should talk about. Exercise 6, we want to factor negative 10m to the 9th plus 70m to the 5th. Here we have a negative leading coefficient. If you have a negative leading coefficient out front, the first step is to factor out the number negative 1. So when I factor negative 10m to the 9th plus 70m to the 5th, the first thing I'll do is factor out a negative 1 and divide both terms by negative 1, giving me a positive leading coefficient. 10m to the 9th minus 70m squared. Now I can set my sights on the numbers to see what the largest value is that divides both 10 and 70. That number is 10, and so I factor out a 10 and divide both terms. I check the numbers to make sure I didn't miss anything. I have 1 and negative 7. 
no more numbers to factor out. Now I set my sights on the variables. I have m to the ninth and m to the fifth. Both terms have m, so I can factor out some m's. How many can I factor out? Look for the smallest exponent on the m's. We have m to the ninth and m to the fifth. The smallest exponent is 5, so we will factor out m to the fifth and divide both terms by m to the fifth. That leaves us with 1m to the fourth minus 7. Reinspect the terms that we just received, 1m to the fourth minus 7, and see if there are any more terms to factor out. There are not. We can now write our polynomial in standard form. I'm sorry, in factored form. Negative 10m to the fifth times m to the fourth minus 7. Another interesting case is a case where we have two different variables. In exercise 7, we have x to the third, y to the second, minus 3x to the second, y. We begin by copying the problem down and then looking for things that are in common. We start by looking at the numbers and we have the number 1 and the number 3. There is no common number to fact out, no common factor. And so now we set our sights on the variables. We have x to the third and x to the second. Both terms have x's. The smallest number of x's is x squared, and so we factor out an x squared and divide both terms by x squared. We set our sights on the other variable in the problem, which is y. Both terms have y. The first term has y squared. The second term has a single y. We factor out the smallest exponent of y's, which is y to the first, and divide both terms by y, leaving us with xy minus 3. I double check both terms to see if we have any common factors that can still be removed and we do not. So now I write my polynomial in factored form x squared y times xy minus 3. Here are a couple of problems for you to try. Can you factor these two polynomials? Pause the video here and let's see how you do. In exercise 8, we want to factor 20n to the third plus 12n plus 12. We're looking for the largest number that divides both 20, 12, and 12. That number is 4. So we begin by factoring out a 4, and then we divide each term by 4. We reinspect the numbers to make sure we haven't missed anything. We have 5, 3, and 3. There's no number larger than 1 that divides all three of those and so we're done as far as our numbers go. Now let's look at our variables. We have n to the third, n to the first, and then no n's at all. Notice that all of the terms do not have a common variable. Because all three terms don't have n's attached, we cannot factor out any n's. We simply have our 4 times 5n to the third plus 3n plus 3. That's our polynomial in factored form. In exercise 9, we have 3ab squared minus 6ab. We begin by looking at the numbers 3 and 6. The largest number that divides both is the number 3, and so we factor out a 3, and then we divide both terms by 3. We then look at our variables. We have a and a in both of them. Both terms have an a, so we factor out the common a and divide both by that. Then, I see that I have a b squared and a b. I factor out the common b, and that leaves me with simply 1b minus 2. The factored form is 3ab times b minus 2. And now you know how to factor polynomials using the greatest common factor. For more information on factoring using the greatest common factor, see the factoring section in Mr. Dory's Algebra Handbook available at www.dorypublications.com.